Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I had a few things to talk about spiritual adepts and uh, the things that I've learned from the Law of One uh, in the last day or so regarding that topic, which is, which is termed in uh, the Law of One online under the category um, the negative path. Mm, apparently, uh, according to that and also according to my own observations of the world, there, there is a negative path for, of spiritually advanced beings here on earth in human form who use, who use their third eye point to mind control other people and who use, um, and use the stimulation of other people's sex, sex drive to get what they want from them. Uh, in other words, to, to manipulate and control other people's behavior to their own advantage. And this is called the negative path in the Law of One because it's, it's what is known as service to self. Here in the ascension process, what will be happening with people that prefer this path is that they will be moving on uh, as they pass on to a planet where it's possible for this to happen. Uh, or, or more of a hell world or purgatory world kind of planet where this uh, type of energy still exists. Um, that's my first thought is that's the likelihood. Uh, otherwise they may, uh, as some said at the beginning of the ascension process, they may exist in a, an alternate timeline on an, in an alternate reality here on earth that's, that's that's more negatively or more densely aspected and they may continue in that timeline as it, it, as it slowly loses um, vital force uh, for a long time, maybe a few centuries because more and more people will be choosing uh, through their soul like wisdom choosing the path of service to, to others um, because that's what this planet has become earth has become or such people and some of the other people any number of people may choose to as they pass on to go directly to source um, which is a glorious sort of a, a celebration you know it's not like a punishment or like that so there are a lot of choices here on earth right now now to get back to the spiritual adepts um, I, I mentioned earlier that that well okay here's the setup there are spiritual adepts who are dedicated to the negative path, who um, who feel that they are very like spiritually advanced, which is true. It's very spiritually advanced compared to almost everyone else on Earth, and that they should be the ones who who control what happens on Earth and slowly guide humanity in the right direction. Um, and these spiritual adepts will be just as it says in the law of one they will be emphasizing their third eye point they will be using their third eye point to control other people's vital drives especially the sex drive and also fear fear of death um, to ratchet up those feelings in other people to to guide them in the direction that they want them to go in in between the spiritual adepts and the the people that they use for their own purposes, like the great masses of people, that they, their thought waves used to sweep through over the newosphere before the ascension process began. Um, there's another class of people, and those are the people closely associated with them. Um, to a spiritual adept in a negative path, the, the thought of feeling sexual is very, um, is very uh, distasteful. They, uh, they feel that if they, if they um, engage their sex drive, um, it should be very sparingly, and that um, instead they should send all the energy that they have, what they call in, in, in the East, uh, East India, they call it uh, ojas, O-J-A-S, I think. They send that up to the third eye point to increase their psychic powers. And in that way, they say, 
that's a theory that that the that is from the east is that in that way the um, strength and vitality of the vi of the pranic column can be preserved so so for them it's very important to be in an environment where there's not much sexual thoughts occurring and they, they need a certain number of people to support them in their practices and in their institutions and these people often lay people um, might be married might be single um, they they will perform psychic surgery on and and in order to prevent um, in order to prevent them from feeling a sexual feelings and the way of thinking as I understand it regarding this is that uh, here and here are we here are we the great powerful um, spiritually adept um, uh, select few, the, the spiritual elite who control the destiny of this world, right? And here are they whom we must, whom we must have in our area and it will not, they cannot rise to the understanding, the august understanding that we have regarding the importance of, el of eliminating their sexual feelings and cultivating their higher chakras. They're not at a point in their spiritual evolution where they can do this. We can take a hand in, in helping them al along this way and at the same time serve ourselves because we, can't, we need their help and we can't tolerate their sexual feelings. We can do this psychic surgery and why should we ask them their permission? They are hardly in a position to, to agree in a wise way for the sake of their souls. And so these psychic surgeries are performed on the people that congregate around them uh, without their permission. Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, unfortunately it can result to soul devolution, to the severing of the silver thread that connects the lower and the higher mental bodies and to, to making the subtle bodies um, uh, unsuitable for ensoulment. So then the soul floats up and cannot no longer um, offer uh, healing uh, wisdom to the actions being proposed by the mental mind um, for life on earth. That's my, that's my concern about this, this practice. First, it's a free will planet and this doesn't presuppose free will, this practice. And second, that it, it's detrimental actually to the soul's evolution, it, even though it proposed and thought of in another way. And then then there are the great masses of people and the feeling of the spiritual elite towards these masses is that is that they are hopelessly beneath them. They are more like animals and that they need to be driven in certain directions and forced into other directions and in this way and that social experiments, uh, surgical experiments on these people is no big deal because they're close, close enough to the animal realm for it not to matter. So um, you see these types of practices having been t taking place. Don't be too taken aback. It's meant well, but it's, it has not worked out well for, for hu humankind. And soon we'll be over with because um, these, the people that, are, that have the notion of ne negative path orientation will be moving on into other um, to other locales, either temporally or um, dimensionally. In fact, they already have. It's just, it's just our notion that they're still here that causes us to bring back the collective memory of what once was. So when we encounter these memories, these collective memories of what once was, the thing to do is to bless them and transform them with love and light, the violet flame of Saint Germain and so forth. And, and these, will, these will, and you can also say, uh, may you be blessed with unconditional love. And these will help to clear our newosphere and uplift our, our newosphere and also to uplift their feeling about themselves so that they can reach as according to the law of one reach the highest level of the negative path as soon as possible and then be in a position to retrace their their energy to the positive 
and on to higher levels. So, so we can serve all concerned through neutral witnessing and through transmutation, uh, transmutation towards the light with love. Prior to the shift, uh, in about the year 2000 and earlier, the scene, the newospheric scene on Earth was quite something different. Um, there were rolling clouds of unconscious thought um, all over the planet. And there were only about maybe 10 or 12 people on Earth who had the, um, the um, psychic oomph to, to manipulate those clouds of unconscious uh, thought forms consciously. And so they would, um, while people were sleeping at night, they would uh, insert certain phrases into the psyche of the world at large, the Dreamtime world, that were could be that were, could be called actuators, and these actuators could be um, would be linked to to a, a form of acting out, right, and uh, maybe through imagery or otherwise, I wasn't in on this, I don't know, but, but I, I, I was there when, when I began to notice these actuators floating around and being changed by, in the, in the year 2000 and after that, being manipulated by these very adept spiritual um, people known as the controllers. And they would, they would um, program this malware into the population while they were sleeping at night and with an actuator that they could in, then uh, speak consciously during the daytime and that would actuate some uh, change of energy like ripple in the stream or restreaming of the energy of the unconscious thought cloud of the world and apparently had been very successful at this for quite some time. Then the shift happened in uh, 2012, the shift happened and everything changed and suddenly people started rising to consciousness, ordinary people started rising to consciousness of the unconscious thought cloud of the world. And so they began noticing that what the work that the controllers were doing. And so with each new group rising up, uh, the work of the controllers became less effective. And things didn't really reach a tipping point until quite recently when many, many people have risen to the light and are aware of uh, other people's repressed energies. That's what's happening right now in the world. And so at this point, all it will take is that a counteractualization or an, uh, a bringing to consciousness of the actuators that are um, that are in place have been in place because of activity that occurred in the past, either either uh, through the controllers on Earth or through those who control them, who are members of the demon realm. Uh, it's been brought to my attention recently that there's still like a uh, an echo of a being, an entity called a harpy that. Um, that circulates here and there according to mm, the collective recall of certain types of negative energy. And there have been many others, I forget how many in fact, there have been um, all the images of Satan, all the presences of Satan by various names and worshipped in various forms. There have been the disembodied thuggies who were actually a form of spiritual adept that have gotten onto the the psychic plane at a very high level of a psychic plane negative and who have been looking for ways to get back into form but unable to find them and because of the rising of the light on earth and who apparently have migrated elsewhere now perhaps onto an astral negative planet. Um, then there were the subtle sorcerers whose uh, energetic hold on humankind, uh, both in form and beyond form, has, has greatly lessened. And m m many, many others such. So I'm not too familiar with all of them. So all of these negative entities uh, have been uh, controlling the controllers. And as the entities have lightened up and left and Earth, 
then the controllers have uh, dwindled in power more and more, and as more people have risen up into um, conscious understanding and conscious hearing and seeing of the clear realms that were f formerly subconsciously held in the memories of, of everyone on Earth, then, then now everything is changing, and it's the beginning of the... Um, co-creation of the new reality that has been proposed over the last bunch of years, that more and more people are finding ways to help co-create a new reality through the astral realm that then manifests in the physical realm. So now you may be wondering, what about the controllers? Do we need to fight them? Do we need to, to change them? Do we need to, to, to send them off someplace? What do we need to do? And the answer is this. At the time of the shift, already the controllers and those on the negative path uh, were separate from the rest of us. They were, they were on a different, uh, what do you call, alternate reality. They were in a different uh, temporal or and or dimensional reality. For those that feel that they are really true and really real, then at this moment they are in those places where in that alternate timeline or dimension where those beings are. And there is such, okay? But for almost everyone else on Earth, uh, for all those of love and light and so forth, they are already in a separate uh, timelines in separate dimensions, although they can dip back down into those worlds, the, what we would call hell worlds or purgatory worlds, and then dip back out again. We have that option, recognizing as we do our own free will and the existence of the all and our service to the all and our love of all beings um, everywhere. Mm, so, so the answer is we need do nothing. We can say what we wish, we can be what we wish, we don't need to include them because they have chosen otherly. They have chosen otherwise. Okay. Um, in fact, for instance, a, a, a video such as this uh, were it to be found in the, in the worlds inhabited by the, the negative path humans and other negative path entities would be banned from the internet, would it not? Because it explains some weakness that they might have. So what we will find in the multi-dimensional, multi-temporal universe is that in certain realities it will be impossible to find this video online. But in our reality, in, in our love based, love-oriented reality, it will always be available. So we should never be concerned about uh, what we post on the internet that negatively impacts the controllers. They don't exist in our timeline anymore. So you can prove it. You can view the video and you'll know that they have no power here now. There's no need to engage the mind in those mental tangles and in those cause and effect um, dead ends and uh, box canyons that it once engaged in because of their power over the newosphere here on Earth. So you may be asking, but what if, from a practical point of view, what if we find ourselves suddenly in the clutches of a controller? Suppose we find ourselves in a like hell world or a purgatory world or so forth and we can't find the path out and up. So um, the answer to this is in lies in, in uh, timeline and dimensional shifting uh, in, in the activation of light that goes like this. Spirit to team. Your team is way above all these possibilities both negative path and positive path. So you're, you're asking your team. You're saying, spirit, my soul, to team. Optimize timelines and dimensions for the all through free will. And what does that mean? When that happens, you'll find yourself back in the form of Gaia that includes the options of free will and service to the all. See? That's all you have to do. So, so you can find yourself there and you can pull yourself directly out of there. You can also do that um, with positive emotions 
as is expressed by Judy Satori in the website www.judysatori.com. She says transform with love. You can look up her. Magenta Pyramid Meditation and Golden Pyramid Meditation under the categories list. It'll be, you should click on the link, Magenta Pyramid Meditation, and they'll both be on that page, at least as of this uh, video filming. Meditations that uplift into, into higher and more positive emotional expression. They work equally well, I'd say extremely well, especially if practiced um, scientifically uh, for a number of hours every day so that then we return right away to the higher worlds, to the realms of light and love and joy, rather than ever finding ourselves dipping down there, you know? So, and there are many other ways. You can, you can, you can watch a humorous movie if it doesn't include anything um, mean or derogatory towards other people, for instance. You can, um, you can read a holy book that uplifts you. <laughs> You can find or talk to someone who's in a higher dimension and that will pull you out. And gazillion other ways, in fact, that the main thing not to do is to imagine that you're stuck in a hell world or purgatory world because in fact, you are a pure being of light and love. You have an eternal soul and you're capable of whatever you wish to, to manifest as reality. For those light workers who find themselves currently in the thrall of or involved with the energies of the controllers on, uh, on alternate earth, know that the likely, the extreme likelihood is that these are only temporary uh, enthrallments or involvements that have to do with the solar minimum. Uh, kind of a, a cooling the heels period, or um, you might say a light worker vacation um, between the current solar maximum and the next solar maximum. So there's no cause for concern there. Um, um, and I think in general, uh, no matter whether minimum or maximum, when we find ourselves in a situation where we can't uh, can't perform duties as light workers, that that's true. It's for some reason to our advantage or to the advantage of humankind to cool our heels just for a little while.